What are the pros and cons of living in Florida? That's what this video is about. A lot of you are still gonna be interested to move to Florida. During COVID, we were one of the top places that people migrated to. Absolutely, lots of you are still really interested to coming down here. And maybe that's surprising to some of you because of the home insurance crisis, real estate market. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the top 10 pros and cons of living in Florida. In case you're somebody that's looking to move here in Florida, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. These are gonna be my personal pros and cons as I feel them. Certainly, it might be different for others. Stick around if you're someone that's interested to move here, maybe even live here, and you're curious to find out what my list is. And hopefully, it's gonna help you make the right decision. If you're new to my channel, I'm Katrin Fitzmaid. I'm a real estate agent in Sarasota County and Manatee County. Do me a favor, like this video. It does help out the video's performance. And of course, it also helps out the channel. And thank you so much for watching today. We're gonna get right into this video. We're gonna start off with number one. Number one is warm weather year round. I would say that if you ask most people why they moved to Florida, there's gonna be a lot of reasons, but the one reason people always give is the warm weather year round. Now, we're gonna also talk about the negative, which that type of weather poses, especially in the summertime. But a lot of us are coming from up north. I came from New York City and I was kind of done with the cold weather in New York City. That wasn't the primary reason why I moved, but it certainly is the reason why I stayed. I actually have even gotten really used to the summertime here as well. However, winters come now into February, March, April is going to be the most beautiful time to be here because not only are we moving out of the wet season, summers tend to be very wet around here. We're moving into the dry season and usually it's always so sunny here. Temperatures are gonna drop somewhat and it's gonna make it really comfortable living here. Number two is beaches. We have some of the most beautiful beaches. Siesta Key, for example, has been voted the number one beach in the United States several times. A lot of it has to do with the powder-like sand, but the beach is also really wide. You've got Miami Beach, which I think is pretty interesting too, especially for people watching. So there's a beach for everyone here. It really depends on what you're used to. If you're on the East Coast, you can enjoy sunrises. If you're on the West Coast, you can really thrive in sunsets. And no matter where you live in Florida, even if you're central Florida, you're really not gonna be that far away from a beach. Maybe at the worst, two hours away. There is no shortage of beaches and that's absolutely a draw for people. That's one of the reasons they're moving here. It's for that real Florida lifestyle that you're seeing a lot of times in movies. Just think Flipper. Think Florida tends to be a lot more laid back. A lot of it has to do with how we dress. It's always warm around here. So it's very easy to walk in shorts or sandals. Of course, you know, when appropriate, but I really think that the warm climate makes people much more relaxed. And I'm sure somebody is probably watching out of Miami saying, well, no, it's pretty hectic around here. Yes, but I'm also comparing it to New York City or San Francisco, some of the larger cities. Canada cities, Florida is much more laid back in general. And with that laid back lifestyle comes a sense of serenity because your stress level can be lower here. Florida tends to be really diverse when it comes to demographics. What we're gonna do right now is just pull up the census.gov data and we're gonna look at the villages, right, which is Central Florida. In the villages, you have about 97, almost 98% of white people. If we look at, you know, Hispanics or Latinos, it's a small number, 1.2%. So if you're looking to be part of that demographic, well then the villages is good for you. You can also look at ages. So the villages tends to be a bit older. Let's look at the median age here. Person 65 years and over, is almost 86%. So if you're looking for an older demographics, then the villages probably is gonna to appeal to you. But if you're looking for a much more of a diverse neighborhood when it comes to ages and the race and Hispanic origin makeup, well, maybe you wanna consider Miami City, Miami. So there you have Hispanics, about 72%. A lot of people that live in Miami speak Spanish. 
Spanish and English. Let's look at ages. Person 65 years and over, it's going to be 16%. So in comparison to the villages, Miami City is going to have a younger demographics. And you know, we can do this type of analysis and I actually urge you to do this type of analysis if you're interested in moving to a place here in Florida and you really want to understand what the demographical, the age makeup is of that location, go to census.gov because it's going to have the latest information. But the point being is that Florida has something to offer for everyone. It can be quite diverse or not so diverse. It really is very location specific. No state income tax. So Florida is one of nine states where there's no state income tax. If you want to be somewhere warm, you want to be close to the beaches, you only have two choices. You've got Florida and Texas. And I'm sorry, Texas, but the Florida beaches are way nicer than they are in Texas. Now, if you're somebody that's making over $100,000, you're going to be saving quite a bit of money living somewhere where you're not getting tax, state income tax. If you're making $500,000, a million dollars a year, and there's quite a few of you that actually come down here from, say, New York City that are making quite a bit of money to that level, you're going to be saving so much money. And that is absolutely a big draw for many of you. When you're in a warm weather year round climate, you can be outdoors pretty much every day. Now in the summertime, a lot of us what we'll do is we'll take part in activities, say pickleball, whatever activities you're in, in the morning or late at night. So there's still ways of still taking advantage of being outside year round, which if you're up north with the winter, unless you're somebody that loves skiing, it's going to be much harder to take advantage of the outside and really thrive with all sorts of activities taking part in them because it's too cold. Now this might not be a draw for all of you but it absolutely is an important draw for Florida and that is the theme parks. We have some of the best theme parks in the world and our theme parks are a big draw for tourists. Orlando, Disney World, Universal Studios to SeaWorld, and then you've got Busch Gardens in Tampa. There's just a lot to do, especially if you have kids, taking those kids there, everybody's gonna have a good time. Look, I don't go to theme parks all the time, but you know, I try to go maybe once every year, once every two years. I mean, it is fun even as a grown up. People come from all over the world to these theme parks and it's essentially in my backyard. And that actually brings me to my next point, And that is that we are essentially living in a place that people go to, to vacation. Whether you're central Florida or you're by the coast, people will come from all over the world to enjoy what Florida has to offer, the beaches, the theme parks, and there's so much more to Florida. I mean, you got St. Augustine, Jacksonville, Tampa, Miami. There's so much to see in Florida. Sometimes I don't want to jump on a plane to feel like I'm on vacation. You live in Florida, all you have to do is take two days off, hop in your car, and drive off to another city that's maybe an hour away, and you're gonna feel like you're on vacation because a lot of the cities that we have are very dissimilar from each other, right? It's almost like we have different countries within Florida. People speak English, but different countries in terms of the feel and what these places have to offer. They will also look very different. And I absolutely think that's an advantage of Florida because it never gets boring. Floridians love sports and there's a lot of different teams that play here. Three NFL teams are here in Florida. There's no shortages of being able to cheer on a good team here. Florida Panthers, Tampa Bay Lightning, Miami Dolphins, Miami Heat, and Orlando Magic are some of the teams that play here. Now, I'm a soccer fan myself, and that's partially because I grew up in Germany, Brazil, and here I played soccer in school. And so I can't wait to see Messi in Miami, who's now playing for Inter Miami CF. And they're doing a really good job. So lots to do in terms of watching games. You're a sports fan, you're in the right place here in Florida. Lastly, the concept of Blue Mind can take on a strong role here in Florida, especially the closer you are to the beaches. What is Blue Mind? Blue Mind is when you feel more relaxed. You're, you're calmer because you're close or near or in a body of water, such as the Gulf or the ocean. And it's been proven with science, especially neuroscience, that has a positive effect on our bodies. I take advantage of 
de-stressing by going to the beach whenever I can, whether it's a morning walk or a sunset walk. And I know I can feel my well-being becoming much better when I'm really close to water. Even when I'm driving through the Bay Area, downtown Sarasota, and I'm just looking at this beautiful body of blue water, I already feel a sense of calmness. The idea of blue mind can really take on a strong sense here in Florida because you're making it reality. All right, there is no such thing as the perfect place. And with the pros or cons that I think are really important for you to kind of wrap your head around. First off, the question is, is Florida now overpopulated? Absolutely, I've talked to people from Miami and other places, Tampa, they're really complaining about how it's gotten overcrowded, especially over the last three years. During COVID, people moved here. I mean, you can feel the differences just in, you know, getting a reservation in a restaurant during peak season, which is typically in the winter time, has gotten a little bit harder. You have to really plan ahead. Just to give you a sense of how much we have increased population-wise over the last few years, from 2021 to 2022, so just one year, the population increased by almost 2%. And so, yeah, you can feel it in a lot of sections here in Florida. And that's one of the major complaints that people have living here in Florida already, because they're seeing the evolution and many people don't like it. Number two is politics. I have to cover this because it's on everybody's mind. Getting my information from NPR because I feel it is just as straightforward as they can be. People love living in Florida, partially because DeSantis is in power and they like all the initiatives or most of the initiatives that he's put into place. Then you have people that live in Florida that are talking about leaving because they dislike what is happening here from a policy standpoint. So I would say that Florida, politically speaking, is super divided and that can be an issue. You don't know how to voice your opinion. If you have one, you got to kind of walk the fine lines because you don't want to make any enemies or have anybody dislike you. Number three is healthcare. Healthcare options in Florida is not known to be one of the best. Where are you moving to if healthcare is something that's concerning to you? Maybe you're somebody that is now a senior and you might have some health issues. Make sure, make sure that you research the healthcare providers in the location you're moving to because not all places are going to be equal. Where I live in Sarasota, we have really high rated hospitals, healthcare providers, but you can't say that about every location in Florida. So do your research. Homeowners insurance is a real pain point for a lot of us living here. And that's because we're dealing with increasing premiums. Some of us have actually lost plans and would have to shop for a new provider. My premium has gone up by 10% and I'm paying now $5,500 in an X zone. My home though is not new construction. So unless you're purchasing a new construction home, you're probably gonna be dealing with much higher premiums. The average now in Florida is about $5,000. We're nationally, it's probably half of that. And there's been terrible stories where people can't even insure their homes anymore because the roof is too old or they're in an area where carriers won't insure them. But I also want you to know that a lot of people I know have not had an issue with their home insurance and they're actually not paying that much, partially because they have a new home or it's completely updated. There are going to be opportunities in Florida where the home insurance costs are gonna be much lower. It also depends on the type of house you, you get. Bugs, critters, and gators. Yes, we have all of those here in Florida and more. You have to make peace with that, especially if you're close to a body of fresh water such as the lake, you're going to find gators in that lake. And I still get a lot of customers who look at a lake and they're like, nah, there's no gator in there. <laughs> I'm just like, don't even try to tease those gators because they're in there and you don't wanna get really close to them, especially during mating seasons. So remember this, that every body of fresh water, most likely will have a gator in there. If it's a big body of fresh water, there's gonna be plenty of gators in there. We have lots of bugs, lots of critters. We got snakes. The other day I'm walking my dogs. I'm outside, they're on a leash because I'm really close to a lake. Well, guess what? I got really close to a snake. I took pictures of it and luckily for me, it was just a water snake. Mm. 
Yep, my dogs don't like snakes. So if you're somebody that's gonna be living in a single family home, you're in a very wooded area, you're gonna be dealing with everything I'm dealing with, including palmetto bugs, which is a roach essentially. We've got lots of those too. I have an exterminator that comes in every three months. And so that's for the most part keeping my home roach free. But every now and then they'll come in from the outside because the sliding door is open and that's not good. You'll have to learn how to use the swatter and get rid of them. Now, if you don't like gators, you don't like snakes, you don't like bugs, but you want to live in Florida, the other option is to obviously live in a big city such as Miami, you're in a condo, a high rise. It's less likely you're going to be able to see a gator, most likely not at all, right? Because you need to be close to a body of fresh water as it gets really, really hot here in the summertime. This year, we actually had one of the hottest summers we've had in a long time. I believe the temperature got up into the high 90s, maybe even the hundreds, but it felt really hot and humid this year. Now, a lot of you, when you come here, you vacation in the winter, partially because a lot of you actually coming in December when you have a week or two weeks off during the holiday season. And that is really one of the nicest times to be in Florida, I think. But you guys are thinking that the weather is going to be very similar to what it is here in the winter in the summertime, when in fact, it truly is the total opposite. Here in Florida, we have two seasons, essentially. The wet, humid season in the summertime, and then the dry, colder season in the wintertime. We also have hurricanes from about May to September, October. So if you're worried about hurricanes, maybe you should come here and experience one before you commit to actually moving down to Florida or you know, even worse, purchasing a home here just to decide that you can't handle the summer and you absolutely are in despair when you know a hurricane is coming the first time around. Yeah, it's definitely scary, especially when you hear the rattling winds and you're seeing trees bent almost 90 degrees. But most of us who've been through it the second or third time, we know exactly how to prepare for it. It really doesn't face us that much anymore, especially because we know exactly where we're gonna go in order to be safe and we know what to expect. The summer tends to be really wet. You have no idea by how wet it gets. This year in the summer was very strange because it was one of the very first summers where that wasn't actually the case. But outside of this summer, typically we will have a rain shower once a day. It doesn't last very long. It could just last for an hour, maybe two hours. That'll breed mosquitoes. So if you're somebody that doesn't like mosquitoes, well, housing in Florida at one point was known to be very affordable. It typically, would be below the US median average. And that's not really the case anymore. They're pretty much on par now. Looking at the September 2023 numbers, single family homes, median sales price is now coming in at $409,000. And that's actually a 1.3% increase from same time last year. Prices are coming down because they typically always do in the summertime, but they're still up versus same time last year. And a lot of it has to do with the shortage of homes. Going back to September of 2020, prices are up by 33, 34%. So that's a huge, huge jump for the younger generation. The prices right now are much of a turnoff. I mean, a lot of them are even talking about never being able to afford a home. What I tell people that I care about is that they need to get really, really creative and diligent about how they can save money, how they can make more money to being able to afford home ownership. And sometimes it's a matter of starting small. So maybe not getting that single family home, maybe getting a condo instead or in a location that's more affordable, then build equity and then step it up to a better home later on. That's what baby boomers did. A lot of baby boomers are coming in with cash because they had all their lives to save. So maybe now is the time to save save for many years to come, and then get yourself in a position so that you can purchase when you're ready. Well, there's no mountains here. We got some hills, there's some places where it's a little bit hillier, but don't think you're going to go away on the weekend up in the mountains and just, you know, living life there. We, we don't have that here. And so if that's the type of terrain that you enjoy, yeah. 
Florida is not for you. Last point is traffic. Traffic has definitely gotten worse in many places across Florida, partially because we have had such an influx of people moving in, right? I see the difference here in Sarasota where I live, but wherever you're interested in moving to here in Florida, just make sure that you're comfortable with the traffic. And if you're somebody that's traffic averse, you're definitely gonna to wanna to stay away from places such as Miami, maybe even certain places in Tampa and Orlando. Get familiar with the traffic pattern before you commit. These are obviously my top tens, okay? You may have other top tens. Leave them in the comment section of this video. And thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something new, like this video, appreciate it. If you're somebody looking to purchase or list your home in the Sarasota County, Manatee County area, call me. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much. Enjoy today. Take care.